Hi there, it's Sister Marfia. Thank you so much for joining me. I have been um, talking about Proverbs 31, or as we say, the Proverbs 31 woman, and kind of um, breaking it down a little bit. Um, one of the reasons that God has put us in my heart in more is we have we have this all of us including me we have this thing of taking scriptures and dissecting it and taking out the part that we like and especially in this day and age where we're living as we know in the last days we're living in a time when uh the word is uh, for some people does not hold the power that it's it's supposed to uh we have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof we are making the word fit us the way that we want to live. So if I want to live a certain lifestyle, and for example, I think it's okay to steal from my job, I'm going to find scriptures and twist them in a way that it's okay for me to steal from my job if I'm hungry. It's okay for me to steal from my job because they're rich and they're not paying their employees enough. So I'm going to find scriptures, I'm going to find things, I'm going to find people who will uh, co-sign that and agree. So I'm looking at some scriptures. Like I said, a lot of things that God has placed in my heart um, is going back to God's blue, 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 excuse me, God's blueprint. Going back to the Bible, the way that God wrote it. You know, the Bible says that there's no new revelation. The book is written. It's done. There's no one who can come along and add anything to it and change anything about it or say, you know, well, I know what the Bible said, but God gave me something new. No, there's no such thing. Anything that's new in the Bible means that you just figured it out. Or mean that you just heard it, okay? Like this scripture for me, I, uh, Proverbs 31. How many times have we all read it? How many times have we all heard it? How many times have we tried to put ourselves inside of Proverbs 31 and say, that's me? And so for me, reading the scripture and looking at it, looking at it through God's eyes, I'll say, looking at it the way it's really written, not the way I want it to sound, I'm looking at it thinking, oh my gosh, I have to rethink this whole Proverbs 31 um, woman. Okay. So that's what I want to encourage you with. And so again, thank you so much for subscribing and thank you for hitting the bell for, um, alerts. And I really pray that you're listening to the videos. Cause I know a lot of times, you know, I also have do Facebook, um, uh, every day. I think I do it every day. And a lot of times, you know, um, one of the things is people don't like to read. I, I, I don't get it because I'm a reader and I'm a writer. So it's kind of, um, it's hard for me to fathom. It doesn't mean I'm right and they're wrong. It's just I don't understand why people don't read. And a lot of times, unless something is very short, like a one little sentence or one little word, people don't like to read. And, you know, we know that in reading is knowledge. So God gave us a Bible to read it, to know who he is, understand who he is, understand what he wants from us, and understand who we are. Then we struggle. Why? Because we don't read it. So... That's a catch-22 that we created. So I'm going back. And we're reading Proverbs 31. Like I said, I'm kind of jumping around in some ways. But I, I, I do um, want to bring some points out. So I was talking last time about um, it's the words of to King Lemuel from his mother. Um, it's it's uh, noted by some or said by some that Lemuel is uh, actually a pet name, a nickname for Samuel, his mother's nickname for Samuel. Um, that's not proven, but that's kind of a popular um, consensus on that, that Lemuel is actually Solomon, but that's the name that his mother calls him. It doesn't matter with the name. Again, let's not get caught up in semantics. It's, um, it's that a mother is speaking to her son. This is a mother speaking to her son and uh, giving him uh, counsel, a mother who teaches her children. That's a gift and a blessing. And so when the first part that we read about where um, chapter four, I'm sorry, chapter 31, verse four, where it says, um, it is not good for kings to drink wine and for princes, princes strong drinks, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. So again, that scripture was not saying, again, we're talking about Proverbs 31. That scripture is not saying you can't drink, but again, like I said in the first um, video, it's not, it's that there's some people who God has set aside, consecrated for a particular work, a type of work for himself. And there are people who consecrate themselves to God. 
and both are perfectly perfect. Uh, and so some people, God has told them, I don't want you to drink or I don't want you to do this. I don't want you to do that. And there's some people who choose not to like myself. God has never specifically told me to drink, but then again, that's drinking is a waste on me because even before Christ, I didn't enjoy drinking. It's just not a thing for me, but I have, I would drink in certain situations like I'll have one drink for the whole night. I've chosen not to drink at all. I don't bring alcohol to my house or anything like that, okay? It's just the choices I make. I don't drink, I don't smoke. I don't smoke anything at all. And I don't curse. Now, have I cursed? Have I cursed since I even said that I'm not gonna curse anymore? Yes, I have. And I've had gone to God quickly and asked for, for forgiveness. But coming from a woman who used to curse so much, I'm so grateful for the changes that I've seen in myself, okay? So some things that some of us have consecrated ourselves for. So she's saying, as a king, don't get your mind like that. Just like when God consecrated Samson, don't let anything cloud your mind. Don't bring in anything that could cloud your mind. Your prescriptions to drugs. I'm not telling you if you're sick, disobey your doctor. That's not the point. But we all know that some of us abuse drugs. And some of us, you know, there's some of us, abuse doesn't just mean the person that's in rehab because they went too far. Abuse is some of us who just look, who look normal too. There's some people who just don't want to feel any an ounce of pain. And so we just, just that drug just in the system like 24 seven, just constantly, constantly, constantly pray, pray for healing. The Bible says, if you're sick, find the elders, let them pray over you. I'm not telling you to get off your medication. I would never say something crazy like that. But we need to ask God. We, we Anything that alters the way we think and feel, we need to ask God to change those things. So we can pray and fervently pray and ask God to change those things in our lives. Okay? Again, I'm not saying go take a, get rid of your drug, but some of us do abuse it. Some of us do abuse it. Let's be honest. I used to be in so much pain. I used to have these massive, massive, massive headaches. And I, I, when I started to get sick, my body started to hurt, and I was taking 1,600, 1600 milligrams of Motrin, okay? That could take down some horses. I'm a little bit bigger than some horses, so it didn't take me down, but I had to stop because I, was, I know that it, although it was taking away the pain, I was abusing my body, okay? And eventually, it wasn't even enough for the pain, all right? So I stopped, and God has since healed me of those headaches. Um, but then we go down, it says... To, I'm going down to eight now. It says, "Open thy mouth for the dumb and the for the dumb in the cause of all such are as are, as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth and judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy." We're talking about Proverbs 31, woman. I used before. I'm um, just talking about real estate and how things have gotten so bad now that there's so many there are so many homeless people. I was in L.A. Oh uh, gosh, when was it? I'm going to say January, February, end of January. Uh, oh my gosh. I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I was in the heart of LA and I'm now wondering, is anyone in LA living in an apartment or a home anymore? Does everybody live under a tarp or in a cardboard or just laying on a cement? It is so bad there. I grew up in New York. It's always been bad. There. But the point is, are you virtuous woman? Are you praying for these people? There are people who are not even saved. I know this guy, I, when my husband first left and I, before I committed to Christ, this man, he's no Christian. Well, he says he is. <laughs> Trust me, no. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. I knew his fruit. <laughs> but this guy would grab bags and go to the grocery store and grab bags of soap, lotions, toothpaste, and different things, deodorants, and he would just go down into the city, inner city where most of the homeless were, and he would give them these basic toiletries, basic, base need, basic things. He wasn't buying them expensive anything. He's just buying the base that people need. People need to brush your teeth. People need to gargle. People need to put on deodorant. People need to lotion their skin. People need to comb their hair. And he was just buying these base. And this man was not living godly. Trust me, you know this man. He was not living godly. Are you virtuous woman? Are you Proverbs 31 woman? Are you, do you care that much about the homeless? I don't expect us to go uh, pick up a bunch of people off the street and bring them into our homes and say, well, I have a home. You can come live with. That's not realistic. Don't think God can't lead you in that direction, though. Don't think it can't happen. But are we open? Now, one of the things I want to, I want to say this real quickly. One of the little things that's been kind of 
grating on my nerves, grating on my nerves a little bit, is at th this kind of um, care for the poor should start with the church. The church meaning those of us who name the name of Christ. And I'm so bothered by churches where the preachers are, are we're not talking about he's rich or he's doing well. I'm talking about ridiculously rich. Where, where, where his house is so big, he hasn't seen the West Wing in almost four years. I'm, 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 I'm talking about those kind of... I'm talking about the guys who own the word wealth. If you are that kind of pastor and you have poor people in your church, it's a sin. That's a sin. That is a sin. You cannot be a child of God, rich, wealthy like that, and have poor people in your church. And if you belong to a church and you are that kind of wealthy, now, let me preface the, let me preface to say this. I probably should have said it first. There are wealthy people who are doing things that you don't even know about. Because they're doing it the way that the Bible says. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Okay? They're not like these celebrities who are giving and giving, but they get on, make sure there's a camera. Because I'm getting ready to go down to this homeless shelter and give them a thousand dollars. I need a camera, please. Thank you. There are people who are very wealthy, exceptionally wealthy, and you don't know how much they give. And the more they give, that's why they stay so wealthy because they, they, God, their, 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 their storehouses cannot be exhausted. But I'll say this again. If you're a preacher, if you're a pastor of a church, in other words, a shepherd, and there are sheep in your church who haven't eaten yet, and, 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 you know, we have to kind of define poverty sometime. In America, we have to define poverty because in America, poverty for me could mean that I only have one TV in my house. Poverty could mean for me that I only have one pair of Jordans, okay? That's not the kind of poverty. I'm talking about real poverty. People who haven't eaten yet since, they haven't eaten in three days. I'm talking about children who are so dirty and just, I shouldn't use dirty because you could be dirt, poor, rich and dirty or poor and dirty, but their clothes are so torn, and they cannot even afford to go to a Goodwill or a Salvation Army. Because Goodwill that used to cater to the homeless is now a business where they're, and I, you know, they're hiring people and that's their excuse. And I'm sorry, it's an excuse that when you give your old things or your used things, they turn around and charge almost the same as it was originally when it was new. And, 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 and the, the poor, the, the homeless can't go into goodwill anymore. I can't speak with Salvation Army because I haven't lived around one in quite a while. So if you're rich or rich, if you're a rich shepherd, you are sinning. Beyond, that is a sin. That is a sin. I'm not saying you have to go back to Acts, uh, uh, I think it's Acts 1 where, or Acts 2, where they were selling everything that they had so that everybody had it wasn't that I'm so rich I ate this morning, but they haven't eaten tough noogie. It was they were sharing and they were sharing alike. And they would do everything was kingdom focused. Because if if I haven't eaten all day, somebody I was talking to someone about this just the other day. If I'm hungry and I haven't eaten all day, you coming up to me and tell me God is love is not working for me. A person asked me about it and I told him, I said, you feed that person first. Once they're full, then you talk about the goodness of God. So if you are a shepherd and you have sheep that haven't eaten yet, sheep who are so poor and you are so rich that you have a basketball court in your house, that you are asking for a new jet so you don't have to fly with the rest of us peons, that's a sin. And if you have, are, are a church member and not a shepherd and you're rich, it is a sin for you too if you know that people are suffering, but you're going to hold on to yours. Mm -mm, they're going to get theirs like I got mine. There are certain people who are poor and we don't know the situation, so we pray and everything. There's some people who have lost everything because of a lifestyle that they lived. Some of them have lost it because they, they, were, they were stealing themselves and so now they've lost everything. So, of course, we pray first and we ask God. But a lot of us know that God has told us to give and to do for people. And a lot of us are not doing it. I'm still talking about Proverbs 31. This is Proverbs 31. Are you that voice for those who cannot and are unable to? Okay? I didn't mean to get stuck again at the same time. <laughs> verse, but God knows what he's doing. So we're going to do this again, another um, video. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you. And please don't forget, 
tell somebody else about